Hi everyone, I'm Scott Schneider and welcome back to Stereo Niche. Today I'm going to review the Ensemble system from Henry Kloss, which was sold by the company he last started called Cambridge Soundworks. Now this was in the 1980s, in fact I bought these in 1988. They came as a satellite subsystem, but they actually call these woofers. And uh, they were very unique. You could run the speakers, uh, the speaker wire from your amplifier to the satellite and then to the sub or vice versa. Or you could run two sets of wires from the amplifier to each of the satellite and the sub because each one of these has a crossover in it. So you could really configure them any way that it suited the room, which was really what made them so cool. They were very flexible. I was a young man at the time. I moved a lot, a lot of apartments. And sometimes I really had these awkward places where I need to put a speaker, and these were perfect just for that situation. So today I'm going to compare them against another Henry Claus design, the Bullnose Advent. So it'll be quite interesting to see how these work out. Um, I did want to show you that there's another set over here, and this is how they came originally. Uh, they were black, and in the beginning, uh, when, they, when they sold these, they came in a finish called Nextel. Well, after about six or seven years, the humidity in the room would be absorbed into that Nextel and it would turn into this sticky goo. Uh, not a very nice thing to have in your you know, living room or wherever your listening room is. So eventually I stripped that off and then repainted them this red with a clear coat finish. And I've also just recently recapped them and refoamed them as well. So they're good to go. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how these go up against the advent. So we'll be back to you soon. All right, well, I finished the review and I can say that I had probably the best time so far. And that's really because these are so personal to me. These are the first speakers uh, I bought as an adult out of college. And I've had them since 1989 and, and uh, had so many memories of them. Uh, they've been in st storage in, in their box probably for, I can't remember now, about 15, maybe 20 years already. But uh, I restored them almost a year ago, but I only gave them a quick test to make sure everything was working properly. Um, I, you, on these, they do have a foam surround on the mid and on the woofers as well. So that needed to be done, and, and I went ahead and also recapped them. And of course, I repainted them. Uh, and that was it. I did a quick test and, and sat them there. So, to, so this review uh, was the first time I've actually taken them uh, for a spin and, and got to listen to them again. And it brought back a whole lot of memories. And it was more fun than uh, the others just because of the uh, emotional attachment, really, uh, to them. So um, I set them up and uh, they went head to head. And there were some surprises uh, that I didn't expect. Uh, so I'll get, get to that. Um, I do want to talk about how I review. I, I've been sort of negligent in, in sort of explaining that before I get into it. But I'm going to, I rate uh, my comparisons in five categories, and each category is worth a total of 20 points. And it's on the style, um, are, they, are they still relevant today, are there, how do they look, how do they, they work within a room, are they easy to move around, etc. Uh, then I rate on the imaging qualities of it, uh, the airiness of them, the sound stage, the separation of instruments. Uh, then I move into the, uh, the, the low, low end, the mid range, and the high end, and rate them independently. And each of those areas are worth 20 points. And uh, the advent is my baseline. I'm comparing every uh, review I do will be against the advent uh, because I don't use, uh, as you obviously see, I don't use any instruments or, or measurements to, to measure anything or review anything. I'm just using my ears. I want to hear the differences and I want to relate them to you. So. Getting into it on the style, obviously the biggest uh, uh, difference here is how they're set up. You have a one larger box on the Advent, and then you have a satellite um, sub or satellite woofer on, on the um, Ensemble. And that was a selling feature for me. When I first bought them, it was one of the features uh, that made a difference. The other speakers I compared them to back then were a, a large bookshelf but they were large enough that it was not easy. I couldn't put, just put them anywhere. There were some rooms uh, during my younger years I was in, I could only really make a very small shelf 
uh, to put on the wall and these would work there. And that made a difference uh, in my ability to set up my stereo, which was centered to my life, of course. So that feature was, um, was one of the things that sold them. Uh, the other, uh, which I'll get into a little bit later, um, is on the, uh, the sound of them. But the style of them, they're very versatile. They can accommodate any room. And, um, you know, they're 30 years old now, but they, they still look modern, especially, and it wasn't a selling feature then, but at, at this point in at their life, you have to pretty much refinish them. You, you can certainly have that dinged up black um, speaker in your room, but they're not hard to redo. It, the next still comes off with um, just rubbing alcohol and, and a lot of paper towels, and it's an MDF uh, cabinet underneath, and uh, a little paint, a little um, elbow grease there, and you can pretty much make them look uh, any way you like uh, within reason. And for that, I, I really think that a lot of people can incorporate a fairly, obviously they're not as vintage as the Advents, but a, a, a nicer, older speaker, a Henry Claus design, you know, into your setup in, in any room, really, with, with this um, uh, setup. So for that reason, the Advents uh, have been scored a 13, and I gave the ensembles a 17, uh, again, primarily because of their flexibility. So on to imaging. Imaging for the Advents, uh, I had given them a 15. Now remember, uh, if, if you've seen the prior reviews, the Advents uh, image is very centered. It's, it's very pinpointed, dead center, um, and it's, it's, a good ex it's a fine experience, but it's different than other speakers, and it's different than the ensemble. So the ensemble is, um, it has a wider soundstage, um, it also has a little bit more airiness to it, and you can manipulate that by just tweaking their position a little bit, a few inches this way, a little bit turned in, uh, angled in a little bit more this way, etc. And you can, t you, can, you can tailor that in and, and into the sitting position, your listening room, um, of where you're going to sit. And that, uh, you know, really, I think, gives them um, a little bit of an edge. But they do, um, the wider soundstage is just obvious. They sound best around anywhere from six to around eight and a half feet. If you get beyond eight and a half feet, I think you start losing uh, the soundstage a bit and the imaging qualities. So they were close though. I did give the, uh, the Advent had a 15. I gave the Ensemble a 16. So moving into the lows, the um, Advents have a good low end. Uh, it's a bigger box. It's a bigger woofer. So they, they just hit a little harder I can't believe I said that. They, they actually thump a little more and um, on the low end, and it's, it's a little more punch. Um, the Ensemble, two smaller boxes, smaller woofers. I think they're six and a half inch. And I do, and I've always had them set up in the, I think you can see it over here to the right, just against the wall. And you, but the, but the beauty of them is you actually have the flexibility of moving them to corners. You can put them to, there are two of them obviously, so you can put them together and increase the low end. Um, I just didn't do that in this scenario, in this configuration. Uh, it's enjoyable. I still didn't, I wasn't lacking in the low end, but it was noticeable when you're A-B-ing them. So for the Advent, I had given them a 14, and for the Ensemble, I gave them a 13. Now, moving into the, the mids, um, this is where my surprise was for the comparison here. And I'm gonna combine actually the mids and the highs. And the reason is because they sounded so similar. I was pretty surprised that a three-way ensemble setup and configuration here and a two-way sounded so similar. Their sound signatures were, for my ear, very identical. And I really had a hard time distinguishing between the two. They were that close. After I stopped, I, I probably shouldn't have been surprised. They're both Henry Claus designs. I guess that's the sound he was going for, but I was uh, just surprised he could dial it in um, so acutely in, in, their, in, the, in, their, in their tone um, and in their smooth high end. I, I, obviously, I, I must have liked that 30-something years ago for buying them originally, and I equally like the Advent sound. So that's a... A, a design um, effort that, that Henry put into them. And I guess it, it shows the skill of the engineer when you can tune in a, a sound signature with different components. So for me, they, they were equally enjoyable. Um, obviously, I, get, I had to give them both the same score. The 16 on the ad, uh, for the mids, I gave the Advent a 16 and the Ensemble a 16. 
And for the highs, the Advent had a 16, and the Ensemble also has a 16. So in total, they ended up with the, the Advent has a total score of 74, and the Ensemble scored a little higher with the 78, and primarily, again, because of their flexibility um, around being able to put them in a room and accommodation to your environment. And that, uh, for some people, I, I think that's a big deal. So that's the, the main difference in them, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Um, if you want to catch future videos, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any ensembles or if you have any other Cambridge Soundworks uh, speakers, um, please denote that in the comments below. I'd like to hear back. I do want to, to, to um, hear the other speaker. The la I believe it's the last speaker that Henry Claus designed, which was the Cambridge Soundworks Tower 1. Uh, I, ha I have a set of Tower 2, but I don't think that was his design, and they are a different configuration than the Tower 1. So if you have experience with those, uh, let me know. That would be great to hear back. Thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in.